Okay, so we're back again, episode four. And today I want to talk about aerodynamics. And this is inspired by a project that I've been doing with AP Motorsport, who you might remember from the BMW 235i racing video. So I'm developing an aerodynamic splitter. As I said when I introduced the channel, some of the things I want to produce and share with you guys is some product development insight. So I want to introduce the concept of aerodynamics, um, give you guys a bit of background into some of the main uh, things that govern the, the type of aerodynamics that we're dealing with when we're talking about motorsport cars, which is primarily with a low Mach number. So we'll get into that. We'll explain how some of those uh, concepts apply to splitter design specifically and some of the design characteristics that we have to incorporate. Then I'm going to show you a bit of CAD, uh, some of the 3D design process. And I did some CFD on this model, so I'm going to be able to introduce you to some of the CAE software, some of the um, visualization techniques that it allows us to use, and how that then feeds back into the design. All right, so aerodynamics. Aerodynamics is um, concerned with the flow of air, which you might have guessed already, over certain objects. And when we're talking about aerodynamics to do with cars and motorsport, rather than aerospace, we're talking about um, flows with a low Mach number. So what the Mach number is, is an indicator of how fast the air is flowing relative to the speed of sound in those particular conditions. So given that the speed of sound is something like 730 odd miles an hour, mostly with road vehicles, we can consider the flow having a low Mach number as incompressible. And that then pushes us into a certain area of aerodynamics, which is concerned with incompressible flow. And this area is mostly constrained by a lot of work a guy called Bernoulli did. And what he found out is that you can apply conservation of energy and conservation of mass into incompressible flows. So conservation of mass tells you that the amount of fluid or air going into a system is always the amount of air that is coming out if the flow is incompressed. So to look at a simple case, a duct or pipework, you can always assume the amount of air flowing in is the amount of air flowing out. And the conservation of energy then tells you simply that if you have a given volume of air traveling at a certain speed, if you increase the pressure, the velocity has to decrease. And if you increase the velocity, the pressure decreases. So to put it really simply, as an aerodynamicist, what you're trying to do is provide on the aerodynamic surfaces a low pressure below and a high pressure above. And if you have a body, such as an aerofoil, like a wing or a splitter, uh, the high pressure above and the low pressure below results in an overall force that is serving to push that device into the ground. And that then allows the tyres to generate more grip and therefore a faster car. So here's some of the CAD that I was doing for the project. And while that plays in the background, I just want to communicate to you the function of a splitter and it is to divide the oncoming airflow above and below the body of the car. So if you get the design right and you do that in the right way, you'll create that suction or that low pressure underneath the splitter. And that's why the dimensioning of the leading edge is so important. You need to split the airflow above and below the car in a neat manner so that the airflow going underneath the car retains as much of its energy as possible. As you can see, I've also incorporated brake cooling ducts into this design. And again, I wanted the airflow flowing into the ducts to retain as much of its energy as possible, which meant special attention had to be paid as to how the air is entering the ducts. So for that purpose, a nice smooth transition with a larger radius would produce the best results. And as you can see here, I've had to model the bumper and some of the other surfaces around the splitter in preparation for CFD. And that was to get the simulation as representative as possible. The air flowing around the front of the car as a whole has influence on how the air flows around the splitter. So that was the first step in CFD process. As you can see, I'm just configuring the model, meshing it, and setting up the simulation, choosing the turbulence model, the boundary conditions, and running the simulation just to get a snapshot of what the flow is doing at one particular instance in time. It took a little bit over three hours so it's quite computationally intensive and once the flow is modeled you've got various um, visualization techniques that you can use such as streamlines contours which you can set for air pressure or air velocity 
and they just help you map out and get a good idea of exactly what's what the air is doing around the splitter if there's any turbulent flows that you need to be careful about whether you need to correct a radii to assist in reducing the amount of flow separation that's what you get out of cfd you can also take uh, simulated data so i could get the mass flow of air going through the brake ducts there's a lot you can take from that and actually i went through a few iterations of the design to arrive at the final model all right so that's about all i can show you at the moment but what you should now understand are some aerodynamic fundamentals uh, how i've incorporated some of those fundamentals into the design and yeah you should have a good idea of how it works so the next part of the video will be showing the manufacturing process it's going to be made out of carbon fiber so that's quite interesting to me at least um, we'll be able to get some hands-on stuff and give you a little bit more insight what i'd also love to do as another part of an aerodynamic series of videos is get in front of a really high downforce car something like a dtm or even a le mans prototype so i can give you a walk around and we can look at all the different aerodynamic devices the splitter um, the underbody wings dive planes diffusers all that kind of stuff and that will further allow me to demonstrate in a practical sense how the aerodynamicist uses um, the air to its advantage and really gets the most out of the energy that the air contains i hope you found this one insightful more to come in the coming weeks and months um, yeah, like, subscribe, all of that. See you soon.